Okay, about that armadillo problem I had. I bought me a cage. It's a cage that works on either end, so it could technically catch two animals. I got it uh, today, and I hope that it works. I need to catch this thing. It seems really well built. My problem is, I walked over here the other day, and I noticed a hole. This armadillo has dug a hole under my ramp, and it's right where the little stone is that kind of holds up where this slanted part of the ramp meets another part of the ramp. So it's at a very crucial junction where this thing has decided to burrow and dig. I don't want it to undermine the strength of my ramp. So right there is where the hole is and right there is where my concrete brick is. And I need to do something about that. This post here to me is just uh, an important post and I don't want that hole to go up under there. I'm gonna have to start filling that thing in here shortly. But first I wanted to try, if I could, to catch this armadillo. Along this flower bed a long time ago, I had put this little wire barrier. It goes all the way along the side of my ramp. I really just put it there to keep my dogs from getting up in my flower bed. But right now what I did was, uh, it used to go all the way to the ramp. It used to go straight, but I curved it. And I curved it in kind of to make a funnel to make this armadillo, if he comes out of the hole, to make him want to go straight into the cage. I used some more little azalea branches there and I'm kind of trying to make it un inconvenient <laughs> for him to make a right if he comes out of that hole and to, for him to go straight into it. And I also took some advice from my friend and I put some dirt on the wire mesh that's on the bottom floor of this cage so that when he comes out of the hole, he doesn't really realize he's walking on wire mesh until he's kind of into the cage. I hope that works as well. Doing whatever I can to get this little booger to go in this cage. I have several reasons for purchasing this cage and I'll talk to you about those now. The first reason is, it's because my son hasn't been able to kill the armadillo yet. The other night when he got in from school, it was late and the dogs kind of chased what he thinks was the armadillo but they chased it off of our yard. It ran across the road and onto someone else's property. And he didn't want to shoot the gun towards someone else's property or anything like that. Or even if he had walked over there to get a closer shot, he still wouldn't have been on our property. So he didn't want to do that. So that was kind of the night it got away and he hasn't seen it since. And I really can't afford to keep waiting for him to have time to be here to shoot it. I need to just get the dadgum thing caught. I was with some friends yesterday and they brought up that they were having trouble with an armadillo or two of them, two of them at their house. They had actually seen two. And I said, well, I am too. <laughs> so they had went out and bought a trap. And this morning, one of the armadillos was in their trap early. So he took it off somewhere to release it because they live inside the city limits and you can't just shoot it at their house. So he took it off to release it somewhere. And then when they got home, they reset the trap and guess what? They caught the second armadillo. So both of their armadillos got taken care of this morning. This little pesky thing, if that's what it is, I'm gonna bring, bring up something about that in just a moment. But if that's what it is, um, it's gotta go. It's just simply tearing up the whole front part of my house. I just planted a lot of things. And so far I've seen some dog footprints in my new beds that I've planted, but I haven't seen that the armadillo is really rooting up anything I've planted, but it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Um, he may have got scared off a couple of nights ago when he ran across the road, but he'll be back. Um, so I've got to get it done. So the reasons I went ahead and invested in the cage were number one, my son hadn't been able to shoot it yet. Number two, my friends had good luck with catching their two armadillos in their cage very quickly. And number three, I just think I'm going to need this over and over and over again. This isn't a one and done thing when you live out in the country. If it's not an armadillo, it's going to be a coon. If it's not a coon, it's going to be a possum. But there's also another little hitch in my giddy up with all this. And that is my neighbor talked to me on the phone this morning and he was telling me that his pastures, which are behind my house, have been inundated lately with wild hogs, big ones, little ones, and they are tearing up his pastures and around their houses. I didn't know that. I mean, there's a wild hog problem in Louisiana. It's probably a wild hog problem in a lot of states. Uh, up where I live, it is a problem. I have some friends that live a few miles north of me and they have a terrible problem around their house and around their cow pastures and everything. 
So it's not hard to imagine that we have a herd of pigs right now that are terrorizing this area. That's not hard to imagine. So he had watched my video two videos ago where I talked about this armadillo and he was telling me that what I was explaining sounds exactly like what's going on at their house and their property. So I could be dealing with hogs. I haven't ever heard anything outside, not a hog, not an armadillo or anything. I, and I'm up late some nights and I've been having to get up early a little bit lately, but I've never heard anything. So noises, you would think I'd kind of hear hogs out here or something, but not necessarily. A lot of these animals, they're nocturnal. They do their damage at night. They know what they're doing. And apparently uh, if it's an armadillo or whatever, it's dug a hole under my ramp and there's no telling where that hole goes. I'm not sticking my hand in there. And they've just got their own little ways. They root, that's what they do. They get their little snouts in the ground and they go after stuff. And um, so it, if it's a hog, my trap's not gonna do any good. If it's a hog, we're gonna end up having to try to shoot them or something. I just canned a whole bunch of wild hogs, so I'm not scared of that. And I know what I can do with a wild hog. It's not gonna go to waste. But I'm hoping that maybe I just have an armadillo around here that will go into this trap and will be done. I'm gonna set it night after night after night, no matter if we catch it or not. And where we live, it will get shot. I don't have to go dump it off anywhere. I can shoot it. I can put it out near the road and the vultures will take care of it in a day or so. That's what they did with the other one that my son shot. So that being said, let me just tell you my opinion on the cage I bought. Okay, as I said, I bought the Have a Heart live animal cage trap. I got the two door version. Apparently they make a one door version. And it is for the larger little animals like this. It's not something, um, I guess maybe a squirrel might not trip it, uh, you know, who knows, but it says on here it's for larger animals and that's what I need. Now, just by the name, have a heart. Um, it is obviously meant to be able to trap these animals without killing them. And that's the uh, marketing and there's the little heart. <laughs> And that's what they make them like this for. And I get it and I understand. And certainly if you lived in an apartment building or something and you're just trying to, to catch an armadillo or something that's right outside your door, you can't shoot it in a populated area. You can't just put it by the side of the curb, <laughs> you know, or anything for vultures or whatever, you know, you might have to trap live animals and do something with them. And it's not that I don't have a heart. I don't enjoy killing animals. Um, I actually don't do it. I mean, my son would come out here and do it for me. Uh, if I catch this thing, if it's in there in the morning, then I would get him to take care of it. He could take care of it before he goes to work or whatever. Um, so it's not that I don't have a heart and it's not that I don't understand the concept of catching an animal and releasing it. But think about it. When you need to release that raccoon, when you need to release that possum, when you need to release that armadillo, where do you release it at? You go out in the country. You go out in the country to somewhere, nowhere near your home and you let it go. And then it stays alive and it finds another garbage can area to root in or a flower bed to root in at someone else's home. So all you've really done is you spared that animal's life, but you drove it out in the country and made it someone else's problem. This happens all the time with dogs, with cats, with anything. People don't know what to do with it and they go out in the country and they just release them. So I'm in the country. <laughs> I'm in the country. So ours, where are we going to go release it? Are we going to drive to town and release it? No. Am I going to drive even farther out in the country and make it someone else's problem just so that I can have my flower beds back? No, I'm not going to do that. I don't think that's the right thing to do. And since these type of animals don't make pets or anything like that, you just have to dispense with them because they are a nuisance. They are a nuisance. So that's what's gonna happen. So I just bought the cage because I needed a cage. I don't necessarily need the have a heart concept of it. I'm gonna live catch it, but it will be dispensed of because we need to get rid of it. There's another thing too about this that's just as a woman doing things for herself, a lot of these things I have to take care of by myself now. I just wanna say about the directions I'm perfectly capable of reading directions and all. And these directions were very short and to the point. So you would think it would be easy to just follow them and be done with it, but it really wasn't. Step number one says, press door lock in and open left side of trap. Well, there's a little flap at the end of the door. 
there's a, a door that pulls up and then it would come down to trap the animal in the trap. And at the edge of that door is a little flap thing. So I assume the door lock is that flap thing. I'm assuming it because there's nothing really telling me it is. Let me show you the picture. I just assumed that little flap at the end of the door was the door lock they were talking about. But all it says is press door lock in. So, okay, if you press the flap down towards the door, that's all it tells you to do. <laughs> Luckily, there's a little arrow here with the up motion. So I went ahead and pulled the whole door up, but it doesn't really tell you to pull the door up. It just says press door lock in and open left side of trap. Well, I have a two door trap. There's a door at each end. So when I looked at these directions, I was like, how do I know which side of this thing is the left side or the right side? Nothing says that on there. So I didn't know. Uh, I just decided to skip that part. I just decided that what works at one end, I guess works at the other end. I don't know why they wrote the left side on there. And uh, then I went to the second step just to try to figure that out. And that was a little bit hard too. The second step says rotate trigger rod until trigger hook engages with the door. And all they do is show this beautifully manicured woman's hand with an arrow facing the opening of the trap. So the directions say again, rotate trigger rod until trigger hook engages with the door. To show you on the cage, the hook kind of starts in there, comes out of the cage, and there's this long rod that runs the whole length of the cage. And then the hook is again at this end. What I finally figured out just by figuring it out myself was that was that there's an opening here at the top of the cage and the little hook, it's kind of hard to show, but the little hook clips under that bar and that's what holds the door open. There's a little plate here in the middle of the trap and I'm assuming that when the animal steps on that plate, you see there's a a bar that goes up there and it connects back to this whole system. So I'm assuming that when the animal steps on this little rotating plate down here, it moves that rod up top, which triggers that little thing over there to let go of the door and the door will slam. And hopefully it'll trap the animal in this part of the trap. But I didn't figure all that out by just the words, rotate trigger rod until trigger hook engages with the door. It, those words didn't mean really anything to me. I just had to sit there and look at the trap and I had to figure out what this beautiful hand may have been rotating or doing. And then I had to figure out that there was a little opening up here and that it needed to go hook onto that opening. The third instruction just says for a two door set, which I do have, repeat step one with the right side of the trap. So whatever end you didn't do, do the other end. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do that though. I'm just trying to get one animal at a time. And then instruction number four just says, rotate the trigger hook right to left until engaged with door, which is the same as basically as number two. It's the same thing it says if you're going to do both ends of the trap. And then it just jumps down to telling you how to release the animal, lift the door <laughs> and prop it open with a stick or other sturdy object threaded through the side of the trap. Now walk away and the animal will exit. My luck, the animal will start to exit right when I open the door, when my hand's still there, before I get a sturdy stick to go under this door to prop it up. <laughs> that would be my luck, but hopefully not. And hopefully I, I don't ever really have to deal with it. I'm sure that these instructions may not confuse a lot of people. Um, and sometimes I guess I take things to literally when I'm reading it, I'm trying, I'm trying to read it in a literal way so that I can follow each little step but I found that this didn't really have steps. It had two little pictures that didn't help me at all. And it just had some vague instructions. So to the people of have a heart, <laughs> have a heart for people that have never set these traps before. Have a heart for people who really need a little bit more to be told than just these instructions on your box. When you run out of these boxes, these little coverings for your traps, print some new ones with some better instructions. That's just a suggestion from me. Take it for what it is. I do like the trap. I think it's well made. And another thing I'm very proud of about this trap is 
It has some global parts, but it is made in the USA. And it says on the top, it's made in Pennsylvania. So made in the USA, that's a good thing. I will go outside in the morning. I'll see what I have. And if I have an armadillo by morning, armadillo by morning, <laughs> that's my little, I'm, I'm ready. I want to catch this thing. I want it out of my yard. There may be another one later, but now I know I've got a trap. I got a plan and I know what to do now. And I'm not going to let one of these little suckers bother me for two weeks anymore. I'm just going to trap it. We're going to be done with it. So I will let you know how that goes tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to just kind of post a quick little, I'm just giving you my thoughts. Uh, I might just kind of be changing my channel a little bit. Um, I know I changed my name when I moved to home, Hilltop Home Place. It used to be called Camp Joy Farm. So there's already been a name change. But um, as you know, I've just kind of been struggling lately on whether to even have a channel, whether or not to. And um, I'm not worried about monetizing and all that really anymore because there's for a lot of reasons, there's just no point in it. And I've went over all that on my channel. I just kind of want this to be a place I can just be myself as much as possible. Anytime you have a channel, it just, it, it you cannot help it. You kind of get caught up in what will this video, how will it feel when people see it? Will they like it? Will they not like it? Um, will it get views? Will it not? And you kind of conform to what you hope will get you as many views as possible or um, as many likes and all that kind of stuff. When you do create content, as they say, um, you do have to worry about stuff like that. But I'm going to try to take that off my shoulders. And for anybody that says, oh, here she goes again talking about her channel, um, you just have to understand it's a, a living process to go through things. You, you feel one way for a little while, and then you can change that. Um, I do try to pray about it. I I pray sometimes, do you, do you even want me to do this, dear Lord? If not, let me know. I'll let it go. It's fine. Um, I don't really have a lot of concrete answers yet from him, but I have had a flood of ideas lately. So then I started to think, well, maybe that is my concrete answers, is just the fact that I keep having creative ideas about my channel. And so here it is. Uh, it's nothing that's really going to... Uh, be able to be explained very easily. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to do uh, videos about what interests me. If they fly, they fly. If they don't, they don't. Um, as you know, we've had a horrible gardening season here this year. Uh, it was 103 again yesterday. We got down in the 90s last week. I was so excited. I got a lot of work done outside and then the heat came back and it's been so hot. I've been watering the things I planted praying that things will come up. Some things have, some haven't. It's still a battle. We have not had any moderation. And um, so it's not like I can walk out there all the time and just show you all these things I'm growing and, and have a, a started my seeds, planted, growing, harvesting. Now here I'm in here canning. You know, there's a flow like that to a lot of people's channels. And I envy that. <laughs> I envy that because I wish I had that flow. But our flow beginning in the middle of June was disrupted. Beginning in the middle of June, we started having a drought. We started having that horrible heat, just like we had last year. And, you know, things just dried up. Everybody was struggling. I tried to push through it. It wasn't possible really uh, for physically for me to push through it like I thought I was going to be able to. It got the best of me. I had to stop. When, you, when that happens, though, um, the, your ability to make a lot of content kind of goes down because you don't have anything to show people. And people, and I understand this, people want to see results. They want to know, well, how'd your corn come out? Because you showed me how you planted it and you showed me your, your thought process and how did it come out? And you're not able to show them stuff because it all died. <laughs> uh, I would recommend you tune into channels in North Carolina and Tennessee and Kentucky because it looks like y'all just had a lush spring and summer there. I watch a lot of channels from those areas and oh my goodness, y'all have had the best growing conditions. I know maybe a day here, a day there, but believe me, y'all look like tropical paradise up there compared to down here. We look like we're just in the desert down here in Louisiana and we've had the fires and we've had all these issues. And um, so my focus just hasn't been able to be on a lot of gardening videos. And then so, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because actually, I don't want to just always do gardening videos. I, I, 
I'm not trying to be other channels. I'm not trying to be a, a big expert. I'm kind of just trying to share what I grow and what I do and why I grow it and why I do it. And so hopefully that interests people. And hopefully, you know, if you watch me do that, that's fine. But there's a lot of other things in my life. There's a lot of other things I have to juggle with. And um, I've just decided to just kind of lay it out there a lot of times about what I'm having to deal with with things. And maybe it'll engage someone, help someone, interest someone, um, give you some ideas. Um, a lot of times you're not dealing with things the same. Everybody's not the same. But something will pop up later in your life. And then you can harken back and say, oh, I remember when this lady on YouTube said that or whatever. And um, everybody has different experiences. And I'm starting to learn a lot of things about um, just the mon monetary system, the retirement systems, the things like that, the insurance <laughs> systems, and kind of how they work a little bit and what you have to deal with when you go through things. So I wouldn't mind sharing some of that. I shared a video yesterday. I think it came out late the night before, um, just on small structures in my area. And that was so interesting. I love doing things like that. I love getting away from my home and filming things and showing things like that. It interests me and I hope it interests whoever watches it. I hope it blesses you. Um, so that was uh, an experience for me to just do something different, you know, to show something different. I did one on cinder blocks a while back and then I just did the small structures. But uh, I might flip it all on its head here shortly and do a whole different kind of video showing you some properties around here that uh, I might just flip all that on its head. I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> I've got a little list going and I've got some ideas and I, I wanna keep my life varied and interesting. Um, and I don't always just sit here all day long worrying about my yard and worrying about my garden. I do worry about food production and I, to that end, I'm working on that right now. I have been tilling up different gardens. I've been planting. I had the planting plan that I showed you. And it spread across my entire island, all those seeds did. And you will be proud to know I'm down to two little stacks. One big stack is my corn patch, which I haven't actually tilled up yet. But I'm not in a big rush because I'm planting mustard greens, collard greens, and the oats there. And they don't really have to be planted right now. So I'm saving that for a little bit till the weather cools off, to be honest with you. My other little section is going to involve me taking out a couple of azalea trees and shaping up that azalea branch row that I have. It's fine. I just, I weeded it the other day. It's fine. But behind it, I had cut some azalea trees down to the bare bones. And um, so they weren't really visible last year because they were just down to the bare bones. But of course, they've sprung back. They've sent out all kind of shoots and now all these branches are coming up and they're going to be shading out my plants and stuff. I don't want there. I don't want those two azaleas there. So I need to get rid of those before I really make that, those garden beds, everything I want them to be. And I will mention, uh, I haven't commented on her video yet because I was driving when I was listening to it, but Harmon Homestead did a little review today on a little handheld chainsaw. I was just thinking the other day, that I wish I had one of those. So I'm gonna go back to her video and I'll comment on it to her. Uh, but I might look into getting one of those that she had because there again, this is the kind of videos I wanna do. And that is videos showing how I'm having to do things. I cannot, you know, pull a big cord on a big old chainsaw that's heavy. We have one, I have one. I could, I could not spend a dime on the little handheld chainsaw. I have a chainsaw out in my shed. I could wait till my son's home, which he works so much and he's in school four nights a week. It's just hard for me to ask him in the few hours he has off to stay home with me all day and do all these projects with me. I just kind of let him have his weekends and stuff if possible because he's so busy. But I could force him to help me with stuff. I could get other guys to come over and help me with stuff. But I want to get to where I can do things on my own. And that's kind of what I mean when I say some of my videos might change, like just showing you this armadillo trap today and the trouble I had figuring it out by these directions and what I'm going to do with the daggum armadillo when I catch it. You know, those are the things that I am having to think about <laughs> that I never had to think about before. My husband would have handled this. I wouldn't have had to think about it. So I'm hoping that maybe if I just honestly show a lot of the things that I'm having to deal with, like I did when we were setting up this trailer 
And then kind of once we got in the trailer, I went back to gardening. But I think if I can offer some value in my videos, some value of showing you kind of what I'm having to deal with, number one, it might help another woman who right now is having to deal with things like this. Or it might give a, a man that has never dealt with things like this. There's a lot of people moving out of the cities onto homesteads. Maybe if they see uh, some tips of mine of what I've had to deal with and how I've handled it, it'll help anybody. But number three, you might end up in a situation at some point um, if your husband gets injured or nobody can help you with something and you have to figure it out. Maybe it'll uh, you'll kind of go back in your memory to something I had to deal with and it might help you. So that's what I want to do. Roundabout way of telling you that a lot of my videos are going to just start being very honest and very real about the struggles that I have. And I don't mean that in a pity way. I'm just talking about the struggles that I have <laughs> walking out my door, realizing I've got something grubbing up around my house everywhere. It's like my first instinct is to you know, worry. What do I do? What is it? What do I do? And so I have to go from there and I have to methodically think things out. Yes. Okay. I might decide I want my son to shoot it, but he might not get an opportunity for three or four days. In the meantime, I go out the next day. It's done more damage and more damage and more damage. So at some point, and he did try to shoot it. He sat outside a few nights this week, waiting on it and trying to see if he could see its eyes, you know, and he had a flashlight to see if he could see eyes in the dark and all that stuff but it didn't work. He didn't get it. So I could either just sit here and be dependent on other people all the time, or I can figure out how to deal with things on my own. So I went and got a trap. <laughs> if it turns out to be a bunch of wild hogs, uh, that's a whole nother problem. I probably will need some backups and people to come shoot them for me. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go outside at night by myself and hunt wild hogs. I'm not going to do it. But uh, I tell you what, there's a lot of uh, bubbas and rednecks around here that would gladly do that for me. So I, I'll have no problem getting that done. But a lot of things I'm going to be doing, a lot of things I need to do. Uh, I showed videos in the very beginning of uh, my friends helping me clean out my 18-wheeler. Well, and it stayed pretty good. Uh, it has not got, you know, reinfested with snakes and all that kind of stuff. It's still pretty good out there. However, I, I need to do some arranging in there. I need to do some organizing. What does that involve? Uh, I'd like some shelves that I could put things on. And so, but then I have to think about that, you know, price of lumber. Do I want to use uh, like a cinder block system, you know, and I have to think things like that out. And so that'll be an episode at some point. I need to clean out under that big awning by the 18 wheeler. Uh, a lot of things just got put there because I put them there from our house straight to here before we ever moved up here. And before I had the 18 wheeler cleaned out, I don't know if I said this on one of my videos, but the people that sold us this property uh, asked as part of selling it to us, if we would give them a few weeks after the closing on the land to come get their stuff out of that 18 wheeler. So we did. So I didn't have the ability to use that 18 wheeler when we first moved in here. So I took things out of our big metal shed at our house and I brought them out here and set them under this awning by the 18 wheeler just so we could have our house cleaned and ready to show. And guess what? All that stuff is still sitting there, propane tanks and everything. So that needs to be organized because to me, it's just going to become a big snake trap. <laughs> My son shot a snake this morning by our driveway. So snakes are out there. I've seen snakes. I've seen snake skins that have come off the snakes. I know I have snakes around here and I don't want to give them just one more place they can get up under to stay cool and um, be a danger, especially with grandkids running around. So I need to clean all that out, but that might be something that uh, I could work into a video that I could talk about. There's a lot of things that I do and that's on my mind that um, I start thinking to myself, well, other people need to know this. Other people could use this information, especially how to deal with certain things. Other people could use this information. So Lainey's channel might be just a little bit different. It might be a little different. Um, I might edit a little different. And I can't edit too much different because I only use iMovie. I don't really have any editing programs, but just just a little difference as you might notice. So just if you would, just come along with me. If things that I'm talking about don't interest you, I understand, but uh, I'm gonna hashtag certain ways and I'm gonna put certain keywords in those hashtags and stuff to maybe at some point the information will get to people that um, need it for whatever purpose. And 
that's just what I'm going to do. I'm, I have to shake things up to keep it interesting for me because uh, you, you can... You can worry if your garden's not doing good and you don't really have a lot to talk about. Uh, and if you feel like that's all that people want to hear, um, you can really kind of sink. You can feel bad as a channel. You can kind of feel like, um, oh my gosh, I had the worst garden on YouTube and everybody else, you know, did great. And it's it's not really that way, but you can make yourself feel that way. And I don't want to feel that way. Uh, one thing might go up. Uh, but another comes down, but when that goes up, you know, and it's like, it's all a balance. Uh, this heat is actually, even though it's killed my garden and, you know, I had a lot of trouble towards the end with the garden, it's also given me time to take care of a lot of things. Uh, I've gotten lots of paperwork done. I've gotten lots of communication done with people that I need to have communication with as far as some big deals in our life that are going on. And it's forced me to do a lot of canning. I actually, I had probably the worst garden output that I've had in a while, but I actually put up a ton of food. And that was because, number one, I just utilized every little part of my garden that I could. I utilized it, and if I was able to, I canned it and put it up. But second of all, I, by buying little things, like, say, a ham steak, I took the ham steak and I canned six, seven quarts of split pea soup, you know, just using some vegetables and this ham steak. And I took dried peas out of my storage and made split pea soup. I just started thinking about it. I'm like, okay, if the lights go out tomorrow, I don't want everything to be in dry goods form. I want a lot of things to be in jar form. I can pop open a can of split pea soup. Worst comes to worst, you can eat it cold, but it's ready, it's done, it's seasoned, it's got meat in it and protein. And that's, a, that's something else that's been on my mind is, I wanna just say this and I'll wrap this up, but this is what's been on my mind as well is, I'm kind of getting to a point where we've been living here long enough I've gotten a lot of the other extra uh, curricular things accomplished that I needed to get accomplished concerning my husband's healthcare setup, um, getting him all on the Medicare and all that stuff, uh, dealing with my son's wreck from November. Uh, I made a lot of progress on dealing with that kind of stuff. Um, it's a whole nother story. And um, also finally getting my husband permanently put on the permanent status for long-term disability, which was a nightmare like I was telling you about, a paperwork nightmare. Got all that done. So my brain is starting to kind of clear up a little bit. And this might sound, you know, late, but better late than never, I guess, is I'm getting my brain back around prepping and getting my property and our home, our pantry, our security, everything that I think I might need back into shape. Um, I had made a lot of progress to those ends. I was feeling pretty secure in a lot of those things. And then we sold our home. Our old, our house wasn't old, but our old house, the one we lived in before we moved here, um, we had a whole home generator and it ran on a hundred gallons of diesel. And then we had a spare big tank of diesel. So we could have run that generator sparingly for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, it actually got us through after Ida when nobody had lights, we had lights. That generator was wonderful. I don't have all that anymore. Um, so I have the systems I do have, I just need to make sure I know how to use them good. I need to make sure that I'm ready to jump should I need to use them, um, filling up gas tanks. You don't wanna fill all that up too early because of the weather, uh, because it's sitting out. But I need, to, I need to have my processes in order. When the fire happened down our road the other day, I was kind of like a deer in headlights, and that surprised me. I surprised myself by being that way. I, I knew we could get out if we needed to. The fire was on our side of the road at the bottom of the hill, and there's nothing between us and that fire but a bunch of pine trees <laughs> and a bunch of other trees. And uh, everything on the ground's crunchy. It, it, you know, it could have took off this way had the wind been right or whatever. It didn't, and we didn't end up being threatened by it, but that was what was going through my mind when there was smoke everywhere when I got home that day. I knew I could get out. I knew my husband would be safe. I knew I would be safe. And I knew I had a few minutes that I could grab things I needed out of my house. But I was like, they're here, they're here, they're here, they're here, they're here, you know, everything's everywhere. And it's not that the house is junky, it's just everything is stored properly, but it's all over. And, um, 
it just hit me that I can't keep it like that. I can't, there can't be things in this closet, in this bedroom, in this closet, and, you know, things have to be kind of, uh, I have too much paperwork that is too valuable. <laughs> I have too many records that I cannot afford to have burn up in a fire right now. Um, some of them are in fireproof safes, but trust me, from what I'm hearing out of Hawaii and everything, those safes burned up. A lot of people just lost everything in their safes because the safes can only take so much heat for so long and then they're compromised. So the best scenario would be if I have to evacuate for a hurricane or if I have to evacuate for a forest fire or something, to have things in such a way that I can get out quickly. So to that end, I bought some rolling carts off of the internet that you can put things on and put bungee cords around them and roll them around, kind of like a lot of salesmen do with their things when they have to go in and out of places where they're selling um, clothing or whatever. You know, they have these rolling cart things. And I'm in the process right now of kind of getting those organized. So things like that have been on my mind. I'm like, okay, you, you've had two and a half, two and three quarter years now of, um, dealing with the after effects of your husband's stroke. It's, it's time to move on. It's time to say you've done everything that you can do <laughs> to get everything organized with that, with healthcare and everything. Now, Lainey, you need to focus back on your house, your security, your food, everything like that, your transportation. We have some decisions to make with transportation here in the next few months. I'm doing a little research on that. And maybe if you want to come along with me on some of these uh, journeys on what to do. And I would appreciate your feedback because I may not be making the right decisions on things. But I would appreciate your feedback. And I'll be honest as much as I can without giving away vital information or security things. But just showing you a little my thought process on how I need to figure things out. You know, and you have to just kind of start. And I'm just beginning I kind of just feel like uh, I've gotten enough accomplished in the backside here lately that this cloud is kind of lifting off of me again. Um, I, I felt that way a, a few months back when I got some certain things accomplished, like getting in this trailer and everything. And that was, you know, big cloud lifted off of me. But now I feel like um, it's happening again. And I feel like I want to go through some other processes that don't really involve gardening other than gardening being a step I need to take for food security, um, having these beds, having them planted, processing the food and all. To me, it's the food security. And if I can grow enough to sell, I will grow enough to sell. Um, it, it's, it's all one thing, really. When you're planting things, I, I try to plant plenty. But if uh, the weather doesn't cooperate, it, it, it all goes away, your sales part and your home part. So to me, I just look at it as one lump right now. I, I don't necessarily show you something and say, this is what I'm going to sell. This is what we're going to keep. It, it's To me, it's all one thing. And I just hope that by the grace of God, the weather can sustain the, the, the growth of it and that I'll be able to harvest it at some point. So just throwing out some honest thoughts with you. My channel might change a little bit. I will let you know in the morning whether I have a armadillo or not. <laughs> we'll see, and I'll keep you posted on everything. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me through this little talk. Hope it made sense. I just kind of want to uh, show whatever's honestly going on in my life for a little while, and we'll go that direction for a little while and see how it goes. And maybe some things I do will help you, give you some ideas, and we'll just work it all out. Thank you so much. This is Lainey at Hilltop Home Place, and y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the weekend. Bye-bye. Morning update, nothing, nothing in my cage. I'm going to just keep on trying. I'm going to make sure I've got it working right and uh, keep on trying. That's all I can do. It'll be back.